Welcome to this special edition of For the Health of It from HLTH. I'm Bill Evans. I'm joined by Lisa Sunan, president of Data and Digital Solutions Canary Medical. Thanks for joining us. Delightful to be here. Tell us a little bit about your company. Canary Medical makes uh, medical grade sensors that are embedded in medical devices that are implanted in the body. So the, the sensor gives off data from exactly the point of where it needs to be inside the body for up to 20 years. So this is a different role than you had previously in the world of VC. Like what made it you is. make the change? Yeah, the change from VC to ops. I mean, I've been on the operating side before, before I was a VC. And um, for me, the venture side was great, um, but I was getting a little too cynical, you mm. know, as I looked at deals and I was also finding myself a little, you know, you're spread across many different things. You really don't focus on one thing. And I felt like it was time to go back to that, to, to really build something again. So you wrote in your blog post about the change, yeah. and I'm going to refer to my notes here, that you are working to take an avalanche of data that streams 24-7 and turn it into new products and services. Like right. What does that vision look like for what you're doing at Canary? So if you look at the sensor or the product, so the first product in the market's a total knee replacement that mm. Canary did in a joint initiative with Zimmer. Zimmer is the largest knee replacement company in the world. And so if you, you know, historically, when medical devices are in the body, you don't have no idea what's going on in there. You can look externally, you can take biometrics from the external, but you really don't know what's happening in that part of the body, in this case, the knee, for real. Like, mm -hmm. is it getting better? Is there an infection coming? Is, you know, what's happening? With a sensor there, especially one so proximate to the moment of truth, you know, you get a lot of data. Like I said, the data streams for 20 years or so, and that there are many different um, metrics being measured and compiled into algorithms for predictive analytics. But the most obvious one that you see right away is how people are recovering mm. post-surgically. So you can see if somebody's sort of on track in a normal recovery track or not because they're not moving or because the range of motion is bad or, or you know, numerous amounts of things. And over time, that will translate into many algorithms for many different things. And then there'll be other products too, you know, hips, knees, cardiovascular products, whatever. So the idea here is to take that data and make it useful and actionable for the physicians so they know if their patient needs a special attention or, you know, maybe a device is at the end of its life or maybe um, there's a problem that, you know, you can't foresee coming um, that would require expensive medical intervention, but you will be able to see it coming, you know, from this data stream and the algorithms that come from it. So figuring out how to take that and productize it so it's useful and used, you know, and not mm -hmm. just sort of that's cute. Right. Um, is the job. So you're getting a lot of data off of your devices about the individual patient. Right. But there's a trend line in the industry about infusing other types of data For into sure. your first party data sources. Mm -hmm. What do you see the evolution of that either at a macro level in the industry or for Canary in particular? Canary's product is used by physicians doing surgeries, at least at this point, right? Mm -hmm. All the products are oriented around surgeries. So they're in hospitals or, or surgical centers where there's access to the EMR data about the patient. So you know a lot about the patient because surgeries, for instance, joint surgeries are highly impacted by a patient's BMI, you know, and a variety of different factors. You need to understand those before you intervene. And so I think that's probably uh, true. I mean, it's, it's much easier in a way to integrate medical device data with EMR data and other sorts of data in the moment, you know, at, at the procedure. Mm -hmm. Post-surgery, I think um, it will become equally essential, and it's never really been done because nobody tracks medical devices because you can't until now, um, to be thinking about, you know, if you're looking at a patient's recovery, for instance, can you link that recovery issue, you know, bad as it may be, to something else in their medical history? Mm -hmm. Is there a complicating issue, for instance, Parkinson's, you know? or something else that uh, you need to know in order to actually make a diagnostic prediction. So I think increasingly we're gonna see the ongoing merger of information in all parts of healthcare where it used to not exist outside the hospital. So what is the eventual like benefit for the patient beyond the diagnostic benefit mm -hmm. of the data? Well, with the diagnostic, you could have a treatment. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you're a patient who's had a knee replacement, for instance, and there's a problem with your recovery because the knee is maybe not aligned properly and the data tells you that you can do manipulation under anesthesia, go in and fix the alignment, which otherwise you would not recover properly ever. You'd never ga regain your proper gait. So and gait, it's really interesting. Gait um, has become um, 
It was becoming thought of as a metric as important as things like heart rate. Hmm. So gait tells you a lot about lifespan and your ability, you know, to live a healthy, long life. There was just a recent article in the New England Journal of Medicine about that. And so as gait becomes more adopted as a metric that people care about, having true gait information will tell you more about how wow. to care for people. That's fascinating. Right? Yeah. I thought so. So what is the most interesting thing you've seen at HLTH so far? That is a tough question. I think, you know, well, <laughs> it's kind of a negative, but when I walk down the aisles of the expo, I see a lot of companies that I do not think will be here in two years. Mm. And I think the most interesting thing is to think about who's going to be sustainable, who's going to have a business model and a an adoption curve that's going to make them a real company and not just a cute product. Sure. And I'm not sure anybody knows the answer to that question, but I, I do know that the level of niche stuff is not the answer. Interesting. Yeah. So last question. What is your favorite buzzword in the industry right now? I'm going to have to go with digital first. Okay. Because really, isn't it supposed to be patient first or mm. care first or something meaningful? Digital first. That does not sound warm and fuzzy to me, and I don't see why people say it. Great. Well, thanks for spending <laughs> some time with us. You bet. 